Hello there, this is the Bookkeeping Master on YouTube. Let's carry on with this Sage 50 tutorial, Sage 50 accounts tutorial. In the previous video, I showed you how to edit nominal accounts. I'm now going to go to the top here, the customer module. This is the sales ledger, basically. It's, it's called the, the customer module on Sage. It's very blank at the moment. The reason being, there's no information on Sage. I haven't entered anything yet. So the best place to start is to add a new customer. The customers I want to add on here are customers that we are going to have credit terms with. So customers we will invoice and they'll have payment terms. Going to the top here, there's a new button. If I click on this, I can add a new customer this box will appear. But if you're new to Sage, I suggest that you use this wizard button. So if I click on the wizard, then this box will appear. It asks me to put in a customer name. So customer is going to be A, B, C, custom. I'm just making this up. You'll need to put in their address. You'll notice that the account reference is entered automatically. You can edit this if you like. If you want it to be ABC001, you can just delete that and put the numbers in. I'm just going to put in a load of uh, fake details here. Okay, um, so the address is put in. If I then click next, it asks for contact details for the customer. This can be handy, especially when doing credit control, you'll have all the details on Sage. So put in a phone number, a contact number, a fax number, if you have one, the email address. So I'm just speeding through this so you don't have to watch me uh, put all this information in. Their website might be handy. Once again, I'm just making this all up. Contact name, let's put in Sam. A trade contact, if different to the, the contact name, and a VAT number. So that's fine, just enter that information in. Uh, I'll just put in a VAT number here leave the account status as open there are other account statuses but you will unlikely need to use them so account status zero next the default nominal code this is customer defaults this is very handy because it can save you a lot of time in future if the majority of sales raised for this customer are going to go to the same nominal account such as four thousand you can put that in there. You also have a default nominal code. So if they're a charity and you don't invoice VAT, you can change that here by just going to a zero code. But I'm going to leave that as T1, which is the standard rate for VAT. If this is slightly confusing or you don't know which nominal code is going to be their default one, then you can come back to this later and change it then. Next, their credit details, so their credit limit, let's put a thousand in terms, let's say 30 days. And this has been agreed, so I'll tick that. Can't open today, that's fine. There's information, there are boxes here for a settlement discount and the settlement days. I don't believe many people offer settlement discounts anymore. If you do, then you can enter that in. Payment due days, I'll just put 30 in there. Next, the customer's bank name and address on the next page is their bank details. You can enter that if you wish. For most of you, that information won't be required. Next, opening balance. Just with the nominal accounts, it's unlikely that there'll be a nominal balance, um, sorry, an opening balance to enter when 
adding a new customer. So just leave that on the default, which is no, there is no opening balance to enter. Create, you'll see that this customer now appears on our customer module list. So ABC, C-U-S-T-O, that's their account code, their account name, ABC Custom, that's the customer name. The balance of their account is zero, their credit limit is 1000 as I entered that when creating the customer. And all of this can be edited at a later time. Their contact name and their phone number. So nice and easy, I'll add another one. So wizard again, new customer name, let's do X, Y, Z. Um, computers. The reference, account reference, is generated automatically, as mentioned before. You can put in the details here. Once again, I'll just fly through this. Next, their phone number, fax number, email, website, contact name, trade contact, VAT number if they have one. Default nominal code, default tax code, I'll leave them as they are. If I want to change them, I can do that later and I'll show you how to do that. Next, payment terms, you can enter all that in there. And the credit limit for this one, I'll put two and a half thousand. Bank address, enter customer's bank address, enter your customer's bank account details and then there's no opening balance create. So very straightforward, and the next customer has been added. In the next video, I'll show you how to edit customers.